me to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 15. And we'll begin reading verse 21 through verse 28. Again, it's Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And it reads this. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of, the Can- of Canaan came out of the same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered, not, he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. 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 The title of this message would be, The Master's Dog. The Master's Dog. Master's dog. Amen. I just seen Brother Mitch. <laughs> the master's dog. Verse 21. Verse 21. Jesus is on the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And this message is so ironic because Jesus is away from home. From the end of this chapter, Jesus has been ministering all the day long. He has been ministering to the Jews and teaching the Jews. And now the night comes when no man should work. He goes to a place that's away from home, and this is kind of like a resort. It's a place for him to relax and kind of like a vacation. And it's so ironic that pastor is on a vacation because if Jesus needed to pull away to relax and to rest... How much more do we? You'll learn fast within ministry. You'll get burned out if you don't take a time to relax and find leisure. Uh, The late Dr. E.V. Hill will work 14-hour days. But he said after his work day, when he finally made it home, he didn't take any calls. We can say, well, this is the pastor, but he said uh, he didn't take any calls because he said he already worked 14-hour days, and when he finally made it home, it was a time to relax and spend time with his family. You know, But imagine that you've been working all day long. Imagine you've been working all day long. It's late. You, get, you go home. You, you make it home. You, you put on your house shoes. I have house shoes. So uh, you put on your house shoes. You, you, you sit in your favorite recliner, and you, you put your feet up, and you finally relax. But all of a sudden, the phone ring. The phone ring, and someone needing something. They needing this. They, they needing that. So, so how would you feel? Now, 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 this is the scenario within our text. Jesus has been ministering all day long. He finally gets to a place where he can relax, and all of a sudden, someone comes knocking on the door. The text says it's a sufficient, I can't pronounce the name. It's a Canaanite woman. In other words, this is not even a member of your church. <laughs> He's a shepherd, and he has sheep, and it's not even one, not me, not even one of your sheep. 
This like somebody from, that probably don't even go to church at all, at all calling Pastor Venice, saying, I, I, I need your help. And what makes it so worse is, you see, she don't want to talk to the church clerk. She don't want to talk to Miss Abby. And she don't want to talk to no associate minister. She wouldn't want to talk to me. I want to talk to the pastor, and I want to talk to the pastor right now. So she goes to Pastor Jesus, and she says in verse 22, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Let me repeat it. She said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Now, my question is, where did she learn that? Because this is a Canaanite woman. And how did she learn some Jewish talk? I have a theory. Because in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, a blind man, as Jesus will walk past, he couldn't see, but he heard that Jesus was within the area. In church, when you're desperate, you ain't trying to be cute. But he'll yell, have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy on me, son of David. And the Lord, we know that the Lord will hear his cry and, and heal his blindness. But perhaps this woman, as she sat under the table, perhaps she heard this child of Abraham cry. And perhaps she thought if he could heal the blind man, and if he can hear her cry and heal the blind man, perhaps he can hear my cry and heal my daughter. So, 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 so this is where our text, but, but what, 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 what makes it so interesting, she added something. She said, oh Lord, thou son of David. In other words, she did not only know that she knew the essence of what she was saying. Let, let, let me explain. There is a mystery here. Within, our, within this very verse, there's a mystery. She calls him Lord, and she also calls him the son of David. And there's a mystery there because the, the essence there is Jesus' divinity and his humanity. Within that one verse, you see that how he was God and he was also man. Let, let me explain. You know, oh, Lord, you know, that's, that's Yahweh, that's the Lord. Son of David, Jesus was the son of David. You know, David had um, two sons, particularly in his genealogies. You had Nathan, who was in Luke chapter 13, and you had, I mean, sorry, Luke chapter 3 in that gene genealogy. And you have Solomon, um, who were both the sons of David. He's found in Matthew chapter 1 in that genealogy. So when you look at Mary and Joseph, they were both of the household of David. So God is so thorough, he covered them on both ends. So it was pre-told that this Christ, the coming Messiah, will be of the seed of David. And so therefore, you see why they both had to go back to Bethlehem, because David, the house of Bethlehem, the house of bread, was the home of Bethlehem. So really, they was covered on both sides. So the prophecy was that Jesus was to be the, the son of David, which he was. Now, Jesus was asking Pharisees the question, what do they say about the Christ? They say, well, he's the son of David. Jesus would ask, then asked them, then why would David call him Lord? Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there's a mystery there. Because if he's David's son, why would David call his own son Lord? So in other words, being David's son was his humanity. But being David's Lord was his divinity. You see, so, so sometimes we can say things and we don't even know what we're saying. This woman knows what she's saying. We can say hallelujah, but we don't even know what it means. We miss the essence of praise the Lord. We can say amen at the benediction of our prayer, but we can miss the essence of and it shall be. So, 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 so really there is a mystery within this woman's words. Oh, Lord, thou son of David. And we see this. If you don't understand this ministry, mystery, scripture won't make sense. Because this saying, well, not John the Baptist says, he who comes after me is preferred before me. Now, that just don't make sense. He that comes after me, because John came six months earlier, that's his humanity. 
but he who is preferred before me, that's his divinity. Would it not say unto us, a child is born, unto us a son is given? Unto us a child is born, it's his humanity. Unto us a son is given, it's his divinity. Would it not call him the son of man? Who does thou say that I the son of man am? Son of man is his humanity, but we also call him the son of God, which is his divinity. So she understood the mystery of the kingdom. Nevertheless, in verse 23, Jesus answered her not a word. Now, wait a minute. This ain't the same. This, this can, how can a preacher exegete this text? Because this is not the same Jesus. We have came to the characteristics of the same Jesus. We have came to, to, to know and love. Jesus not answering her a word. This can mess up our systematic theology. You know, but so, 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 so we can say, well, you know, this is mean spirited. This is cruel. You know, not to answer her, not a word. You know, now, 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 theologians can justify and say, well, perhaps he is teaching us a lesson of inopportune prayer. And that's prayer when you just keep on praying until you get an answer. Perhaps. However, church, I have a, a, a challenge for us. Even when, if we don't understand our master's inaction, can we yet still trust in our master ways? You know, even if we don't under, understand uh, what our master is doing, can we still trust in our master's methods? It's as Job would say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So, so, so in verse, uh, they, the disciples said, send her away, send her away. She bothering us and perhaps she bothering you. Send her away. And Jesus was speaking verse 24. He would say, I am not sent, but into the law, to lost sheep of the, of the house of Israel. In other words, I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And church, you better know where you've been sent. You can be doing a lot of good things. But you make sure God sent you to do it. I assure you, I just didn't go to preach. I was sent to preach. And don't go if you ain't sent. So Jesus saying, it's not in my job description. It's not my response to Ability. In other words, I got a responsibility to the house. I got a responsibility to the house of Israel. And any of us who are men, is there any men in the house? I'm not talking about boys. I'm talking about men. We know that our first responsibility is to the house. That means if I got to work 14 hours to keep the lights and the, and the water on and the, and the gas and electric on, my responsibility is to the house. Now, if I got four kids, don't be coming to me asking me for a dollar. I remember when I was a kid, my daddy had six kids. A homeless man asked my daddy for a dollar. He said, you, look at, you see all these kids I got? You should be giving me a dollar. But yet his responsibility was to the house. And Jesus have a responsibility to the house. And to the men, take care of your responsibility. It's good to be benevolent and give to the homeless. But yet, make sure you take care of your responsibility in the house so you won't have homeless children. But yet, I believe what Jesus is saying to her, my plate is full. In, in, in other words... That, that, that I have lost sheep within the house. In other words, I'm doing a hide and seek and I'm searching for my own lost sheep. But he says the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The lost? Yeah, it's a house. It's lost. But it's a house. It's lost within the house. 
That lets me know you don't need to be outside of the house to be lost. You can be lost while within the house. Would not in Luke chapter 15, did this woman, she'll have 10 coins, but she lost one. But she didn't lose it outside the house. She lost it inside the house. So I believe what Jesus is telling her, like the man, like I'm sweeping up my own house because I'm searching for some things that has been, that needs to be found. So in verse 23, he's silent. In verse 24, he, he tells her like, it's not my job. You know, it's not my responsibility. So how is this woman to respond? How is she to respond to the silence and how is she to respond to the rejection of her request? Is she to fall into despair? No, but she rather falls into worship. The text says in verse 25 that she came and she bowed down and she worshiped him. You know, can we worship God even when we don't get the answer we like? Let, let, let me give an answer. This is, this is as you going on two job interviews. And, and, and you do two job interviews. Thank you, my friend. Say you do two job interviews. And say a week later they mail you a rejection letter. And we all know, I know how that letter reads all too well. We, Mr. Staple, we just want to say thank you for your time. We decided to go with another candidate that better suits this position. But we wish you the best in your future, you know, <laughs> endeavors. I, I know the letter by heart. <laughs> I've been there all too often. However, however, this is as you still sending a thank you card saying thank you for your time thank you for your time and your consideration and i just want to say thank you You say you thankful even after the bad news i thank you for giving me an interview praise god it's as job who will lose everything he'll lose everything 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 but not only would he lose one child but he'll lose 10 children that's as us coming for the eulogy and we don't see one casket but we see 10 you know, so, so he lost everything, but yet, is he to fall into despair? But, 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 but he'll rather say, uh, for the Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this woman worship, but not only that, not only that, she, as she worships, she says, Lord, help me. Now here we see her terminology. The terminology is, Lord, help me. But we can't, we can't separate her terminology from her doxology. Her do, doxology was her worship. In other words, the terminology was her phrase, but the doxology was her praise. And you have to put them together. You know... If I can, I can hear this woman saying that it's not just my phrase, but it's also my praise. It's not just my terminology, but it's also my doxology. It's not only my petition, but it's also my admonition. It's not only how my words fit, but it's also my worship. Verse 26, Jesus responds, and he'll say it's not good to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. He calls her a dog. And females, you know how you feel when someone calls you a dog. Dogs does not, does not have a very positive connotation throughout Scripture. In 1 Samuel chapter uh, 17, verse 43, would not, uh, as Go David is coming near Goliath, Go Goliath would say, am, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks and stays? In 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8, Mephibosheth would say to King David, who is your servant that you will regard a dead dog as I? In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, uh, 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 as Peter is, uh, uh, is describing an apostate, he said, truly they are, it's a true proverb that the dog has returned to his own vomit. 
So now this woman must suffer the degradation of being called a dog. I think we can ha- a story can help explain it. There was an associate minister who, who perhaps in the 1800s, who was up for a, uh, a, past- a pastoring job. But before he could receive the job, he was to do an interview with a, another local, very seasoned pastor within the area. He was to do that interview. And so he went in for the interview, and having gone in for the interview, the secretary, secretary had him to sit in the chair for a whole hour and wait. For a whole hour just waiting. So after the hour has passed, the secretary said, the pastor will see you now. So he goes back in the pastor's office, and the pastor has him sit in a, in a, in a chair in his office, and the pastor doesn't, does not speak a word for another whole hour. He didn't speak a word. So not only must he suffer an hour within the waiting room, but he must also suffer an hour of silence. So the pastor finally speaks, and he said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to spell the word cat. I want you to spell the word cat. The man being puzzled concerning an elementary word, C-A-T. That'll be all. Interview is over. The man left puzzled. He left puzzled. But little did he know why he was waiting in that waiting room. There was a purpose. And while he endured the hour of silence, there was a purpose. And while he humbled himself to the elementary spelling of the word cat, there was yet a purpose. The board, the board, the, the, the senior, the seasoned pastor talked to the board and said that he had successfully passed. Little did he know the interview was not concerned. This portion of the interview was not concerning his, uh, his competence, but it was rather concerning his character. And the past season pastor said he has displayed the virtue of patience, endurance, and humility. In other words, while he was sitting in the waiting room, it was testing his patience. Would not the psalmist say, I waited patiently on the Lord? Now, a lot of us wait, but a lot of us ain't waiting patiently. But yet, when he, as he sat before the pastor in silence, the, the silence was testing his endurance. Because if you're going to shepherd a flock, you need to be endure. You need to endure. Now, pastors are leaving every day. We are blessed because we had our pastor for 20-some years. But I assure you, just as quick as preachers are coming in, it's as quick as pastors are going out. We are just very, very blessed. So the silence was to test his endurance, but yet the elementary spelling of the word cat, that was to test his humility. Will you humble yourself to spell an elementary word, to suffer degradation for the master? So in other words, when this woman, the Canaanite woman, when her that when her request was denied, could it be that that was a, 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 a test of her patience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When Jesus answered her not a word, could it be that that was a, 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 a test of her endurance? Yes, and when Jesus finally called her a dog, could it be that that was a, a test of her hum- humility? Yes, so in other words, it all served a purpose. And I'm so glad our Lord don't waste nothing. Yes. So he calls her a dog. Is this woman to dispute with the master? No, but in verse 27, she says, truth, Lord. In other words, I see an attribute of the master. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Therefore, if my master called me a dog, then a dog I am. Truth, Lord, you spoke the truth. Because I am not an Israelite, I am a Canaanite. I am not a Jew, I am a Gentile. And I am not biologically a child of Abraham, therefore I must be a dog. 
But yet she used to master truth. But yet I can see this woman using her imagination. And she sees the master of the house. And she sees him baking the bread. She sees the tablecloth laid and she sees the master preparing the table. Not only that, he can see him putting the chairs up on the table. And he, you can see the master calling the children to the table. And I just want to let you know, God only got a children table. He don't got no adult table. Because if you're going to come to him, you must come to him as a child. So she see him laying the table. And she see him laying the bread. Because he's given us this day our daily bread. She sees the master laying the bread. But underneath the children legs there is something brushing up in between she noticed that there is something under the table so using my imagination perhaps she looks under the table and under the table she sees a dog but to her surprise this is not a wild dog this is not a wild dog nor is this a outside dog but rather, this is a house dog, which is the family dog. So the woman is delighted to her surprise. Yes, it's true, I am a dog. But there is a place within the house for a dog. I used to misread the text. When I read the text, I used to quote it by saying, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. But it doesn't say that. The text rather reads, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. In other words, this woman, by using the word there, she put herself under the ownership and lordship of the master. In other words, she's saying that I'm not a wild dog, but she's saying that I'm rather a house dog. In other words, I'm the master's dog. And being that Jesus is the master over the house, is he not obligated over all who are within the house? When I go to Kroger's, I don't own a dog. But when I go to Kroger's, there's a whole owl just for pets. A whole owl for food just for pets. They have dog food. They have everything for the dogs. Because being as a master of the house, not only do I take care of the children, but I take care of the dog. And don't you know, sometimes children can be ungrateful. Sometimes, don't you know, a dog can be more hungry for the bread than a child? All this time, the children didn't even appreciate the bread. Early within the chapter, they, they was more concerned. They weren't concerned about bread. Earlier within the chapter, they were more concerned about the washing of hands. In other words, they put their traditions above the bread. However, this dog is not just, this dog is satisfied with a crumb. It's not always easy to feed sheep. Up here, I'm just a fill-in, but it's not easy to feed the sheep. It's not easy to make the meal, to feed the sheep. As Brother Marshall would describe, he'll say a thank you. The reason we say thank you because last week, it, it's a lot of work that goes into feeding the masses. Someone has to buy the food. Someone has to cook the food. It's a lot of work to cook for 200 people. It's not an easy task to feed the masses. It, it may look easy on the other end, but it's not an easy task to break the bread of life. It's, not, it's a heavy weight on my shoulders. So last week, what I did was after we all ate, I got out a broom and I got out a dustpan. And what I would do, I would begin to sweep. 
I began to sweep, and I will begin to sweep, and I will move the chairs, and I'll continually sweep. And, and it really it was so peaceful. Nobody bothering me. It was so peaceful. And, and, and I recall some famous words from a, from a famous preacher. I believe it was Charles H. Spurgeon, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And he said, I would rather push a broom than I have the weight of preaching. In other words, he's saying the weight of preaching is so heavy, I, I'd rather push a broom. So therefore, he said, if you can do anything else, do it. When you can't do any, nothing else, become a preacher. But I said, I can get used to this, sweeping these floors. If that can be my ministry, I'll be just fine. So I said, Deacon Jet, Deacon Jet, I'll trade you. I said, while I'm doing the sweeping, you do the preaching. I'll sweep if you preach. But Deacon Jet is smart. He said, nah, Rev. I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> However, I was amazed how much crumbs were underneath the table. And these were tables with the majority of adults. But, Deke, I would like to say if the adult table have crumbs under it, how much more will the children table have crumbs under it? So I see the dog sitting under the master's table. And as he sit under as she sit under the table, she realizes that the children are not the most tidiest eaters. And that as the bread is being broken, here and there perhaps a crumb will fall. And she sit under the table and she waiting for the crumb to fall. In other words, I don't need much, but if I can just have a crumb. Have you ever been desperate? You know, when, when I, people say, well, you, know, you swept the floors. When I, when I piled up the, 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 the crumbs and put them in a dustpan, what did I do with the crumbs? I threw them away. I, I hope you don't think I'm about to eat off the floor. But when you're desperate, when, 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 when you're really desperate, when, 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 if you ever truly been hungry, you know, we, 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 people say, well, it's a hard not life. It ain't no hard not life. You never ate off the floor. But when you're really desperate, Reverend Bird, I believe that you'll go down and you would. See, I'm in my good suit, but if you're really desperate, if you're really desperate, you'll go down to the floor. And you'll go, Reverend Bird, I ain't trying to tell his business, but he had to eat out the trash can. But when you really hungry, you would eat out the trash can. You'll eat what other people have thrown away. And if you really in need for a blessing, and if you really need, a, need the Lord to come through for you, you'll get down and you'll eat out the floor. It doesn't matter where it comes from because even a crumb is something that's a lot better than nothing. And have you ever needed something from the Lord? I don't know about you, but sometimes I need something. I need something because I got nothing. I said, Lord, I will be satisfied with the crumb because a crumb is better than nothing. We're not the, uh, the, 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 you know, rich man Lazarus, you know, uh, you know, poor man, rich man Lazarus. Would not he ask that, 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 the, that, 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 that for just a drop of water to be put on his tongue? This let me know that something is better than nothing. And, and, and I don't know about you, church, but, 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 but I, perhaps this woman sent something. Per, perhaps she heard something. Perhaps I can hear it saying to the master, I hear showers of your blessings. Thou art scattering full and free. Showers the thirsty, oh, so refreshing. She said, let some drops, let some drops, let some drops 
fall fresh on. Um.